uh, just about anything that's in the that's kit. That's aluminum, right? You know, if aluminum or or uh, eighth inch wire or okay. thirty second wire. How do you cut out the bell crank? Not on this thing. No, we uh, we make all of our metal bell cranks. We put them all together, but we get all the parts made somewhere else. Oh, okay. Yeah, we just put them together here. Well, they probably stamp them out or something. Yeah. Windy sweeper. We bend all of our landing gear here in the house. Okay. Get all of our wire in, 72 inch lengths, we cut it down to size, and bend it. I'm, uh, I'm in a club with Eric Rule, RSM Distribution. And on one of his kits, uh, which I built, and then I wrecked the plane, <laughs> um, he didn't have anything this big. So when he made the fuselage cutouts, yeah, the he's from our uh, club okay. and all. He, he, he wanted to automate a lot of stuff, and and John could see that you know you just don't have the volume for that. Right. You know. Yes. Yeah. So it works for us the way we're working it, yeah. and I have been here over 20 years. Oh, and, very good. Uh, John Parker has been here over 20 years, uh -huh. over 25 years. So. Um, we work together, and I think we work pretty well together, too. Yeah. He does everything there is to do with wood. John Parker does the wood. He does all the lasering. Uh -huh. Nick is in charge of the fuel tanks, and that's what Nick does is the fuel tanks. And I do all the packaging, uh -huh. and I do the uh, rep website, run the website. Oh, okay. Now, if you want to come over sure, here sure with do. the camera, this, sure. whole, this whole area here, all the way down, is all in number order. Wow. And it starts at 100 and goes up to 1800. And if you place an order uh -huh. through the website or if you turn an order in, it gets to, goes straight over to the hobby shop. Have you been to the hobby shop yeah, yet? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Okay. The girls over there fill the orders and they do the shipping. We don't ship anything over here. This is all the manufacturing things that get uh, mm -hmm. manufactured and packaged over here. Right. This is only Brodac stuff. Anything that you see over there that it, it's a hobby shop that is Sig, Dubro, yeah. right. anything like that, Sullivan, it's ordered and it stays over there. I see some It's not over kits. here. Over yeah. here is all Brodac items. All right. Now, when they put the things on the hooks over at the hobby store, they take them off of there to fill the orders. When their hooks are empty, they'll come over here and they grab out of these boxes. Mm, when nice. this box is empty, they'll take it back there and they'll put it on my table and I'll take you back that okay. way. And that's yeah. how I know that what to, you need, to replenish right. the boxes. That is a good um, system. Over here, the Dare, we had, John had bought out the Dare company right. probably about five years ago. They right. were out of Cumberland, Maryland. Mm. And he was here, Terry, um, that owned Dare, Terry Dean, came here and probably about four years or longer he came here and he actually packaged his own kits because I couldn't keep up with the demand of all the Brodac kits which is over a hundred. Hmm. Terry has over 100 kits and they are all rubber powered, yeah. free flights mm -hmm. and electric RCs. Right. And we all, John had also bought out Spirit of Yesteryear and there's probably about 35 different Spirit of Yesteryear kits. So, all together, there's close to 300 kits to be made. Wow. Um, so Terry was coming here, and he was putting together and packaging the kits here okay. in our facility, which was a big help. So he's no longer doing that, so now it's all on us. We are doing the Dare, we are doing the Spirit of Yesteryear, and we are doing the Brodac kits here. They're all being cut here, laser cut, and they're all being packaged here. Over here, all this is the Dare. This is all the Dare design kits, all this, wow. and over here is all the extra parts in these boxes. When I run the kits, if there's any extra parts, they go into these boxes, any of the back parts, any of the extra parts. And down here on these couple shelves is all the box labels, or yeah, the dare, the this is just too, yeah. there, all uh -huh. this is there. And some of the blueprints down there, that's all there. Wow. Okay, when Parker laser cuts a kit, mm -hmm. he will bring it over here and he puts it on these carts. All right. And if he puts a thing on, he'll put a piece of paper on here that says done, like this. Right. And it says that it's done. 
I know that it needs to be packaged. So I'll come over and get it. This one here, he has on here that he has wood on order. But other than that, if it said done, I would take this cart over into my area. I know I can go ahead and put it in a box, package it. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll come to this area. This area here is all the packaging area. Everything that has to be packaged in this building comes to this area. This is my area, and the, this, these labels are print shop on the other end of this building. I don't know mm -hmm. if you've seen the print no, shop I haven't down seen there. The print shop okay, yet. the print shop is down in, in, inside this building, and this is, and they do inside printing and they also do out, outside printing and wow. they can give you a tour if you'd like to see the printing area and how everything is printed but that all these labels are all Brodac labels and they print them in house here that's impressive uh, this is the uh, Pathfinder kit setup all right I have when a Pathfinder I, when I started working for John which was a long long time ago I worked out of a little house John Parker and I did we worked out of a little tiny stone house and it sat right in front of this building. Oh. And they built this building for us because we were expanding and we didn't have enough room. And there was only like four rooms in this house mm -hmm. and a little built on garage. Mm. So they built a building and we moved into this building and they tore the house down and now the parking lot is there. Oh, yeah. But back then, and when we moved into here, uh, when we would, produce these kits, we would do 200 at a time. Wow. If we were doing the Oriental, we were doing 200. If we did the wow. Nobler, we would run 200 kits. Yeah. Wow. Well, since then, we John has bought out so many companies and we've expanded and we ran out of room so we cannot make 200 kits. So we're down to making 30. We can only fit that many on our shelf here. Wow. So we do wow. 30 kits. So this is set up to do 15 kits, 15 Pathfinder kits. Um, I will run 30 of them and on here I have the name of the port and the amount that goes into each box. Okay. I'll take the boxes, the empty boxes, and I line them up on my table here. Okay. And I'll take that whole stack and I walk and I put one in every box. Yep. Oh, and I if see. it's two, then I'll put two in every box. Okay. And then whenever I finish that 15, then I will tape them up and seal them and then I'll come over here and I'll set up for 15 more because I'll do 30, oh, okay. 30 of them as a run. Okay. Well, anything that I have left over because there's always extra parts left over. Mm -hmm. And anything that's left over goes up here. All these boxes are extra parts. I put, a, put a, the extra parts in the boxes and we put them up here. If anybody crashes a plane or wants to hand build Ooh. something and needs a part, oh, we I always see. have spare parts up there. We I sell see. the spare parts. Right. Now down below down here is all the rib sets. Oh, a lot wow. of guys want to build on yes. their own, but they don't want to cut out their own rib sets. Yes. So that's what yeah. these are. These are all the rib sets. We mm -hmm. sell them all individually in packs. Wow. And yeah, this, especially like, like the Shark, you know, the Shark 45. Yes, yes. Because the uh, the wood that comes with it is so unusable for, for a stunt. Mm -hmm. It's so heavy. Now, now, a lot of guys are getting into the electric. Mm -hmm. The electric is big, and that's what all this is. And I have everything in number order, so it's kind of easy for the girls to find. Whenever they need to fill the shelf, they'll come over and take what they need. And if the box is empty again, they'll set it over there for me. Now, whenever I'm running these kits, and these little packages here that you see, I have to make all these little packages up before I can even think about running these kits and putting them into these boxes. Oh, yeah. So, uh, um, over here, I have, packages. yeah, over here I have all the little packages made for the ringmaster. Oh. Now the ringmaster is going to take a belt crank package, a lead out package, a hardware package. So I have to make all my little packages first. What I'm going to do with these is put all these little tiny packages into one package. Oh, okay. Make one bag. So when I'm running the kit, I only have to pick up one bag versus picking up Sure. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. That is now really these, these lead out packages, mm -hmm. when I'm making them and putting labels on them to fill my box up, or if I'm making them for this, I don't need to put labels on if I'm making them for kits, but I 
pull the wire over here. It's again, it's manual. It's nothing, no big technique here. Uh -huh. All I do is I have all the measurements on the masking tape here. I cut it here, uh -huh. roll it out, and cut it. That's how I do the lead out. Very very cool. Now, right up above us is all the samples to the landing gear. When Parker makes a landing gear, he will put all the different bends on here, and he puts tape in each one is a different bend. Right. This is how he cuts it, and he, this is his first bend, this might be a second band, and he makes a sample of every bend, of every step of the landing gear, and that's the samples. These are the samples of our handles. Some of our handles have two adjustments, right. and some only have one adjustment, like this. It only right. has the one. And some have the finger grips and some do not. Right. Parker makes the wood here. He makes the wood handle. He puts the uh, finger grips in. Wow. He cuts the notches for these. And all these pieces that you see here, they are all machined here in this building. The wow. machinist makes these. The mm -hmm. machinist makes the bars. You'll see them over there and, and wow. so on. All these bell cranks, they're all machined or they're all made, put together here. The pieces are bought, but they are put together here. Okay. Um, here, down here, you'll see all the little pieces to the bell cranks. There's just a gazillion of them here. Mm. This is all the little pieces and parts all oh, the way across. Oh, that's for the three-line bell cranks. Yes, the three-line bell cranks, and the middle, the the, the little middle middle uh, piece. They used that machine right oh, the, there. The brass thing. Yeah. Yes, to put them together. Okay. Oh. Now, behind you, this is all the bulk landing gear and the uh -huh. control horns. Hey, Sparky. And there, <clears throat> your when, card over there. Yes, I know. That's the first thing I was doing when I get over there was to get that. Did you get it? No, I haven't got it yet. Thank you, Sparky. Thanks for reminding me also. When, when, I, when I'm ready to do a run of kits or if the box is empty over there with the labels on them, and I have to fill it. I'll come over here. This is all the landing gear and control horns, and I'll come over here and I'll get the bulk gear out of these boxes. Mm -hmm. And these are the bulk nylon oh, yeah. bell cranks. And I usually order these, 5,000 of them at a time. They are not made here. We don't do vac parts and we don't do the molded parts. I order out. All right. All right. Hmm. Um, as you can see, these. These are made here. These are all the tank straps. Right. And there's three three different styles of tank straps that we have. So they're all made here. Parker makes those as well as these tail wheel struts. We try to keep a lot of this stuff on sock so that when we need it for the kits or we need it to be packaged, it's ready, it's done. Mm -hmm. If you phone an order in across the street, this is what they they grab one of these. Our right. print shop makes these for them. Yep. And they'll grab one of these. If, they, if you call it in and they say, hang on, let me get an order sheet. Yes, this is what they're, they're doing. This okay. is what they're grabbing. I've they're heard grabbing Cheryl one do of that these. Many they'll times. take your name and your phone number. Down here go, gets your uh, credit card information and everything you order, they're writing it on this. And when you right. get your order, you get one of these. That's and it right. doesn't have your information on right. it. Right. They take your information off of it. Very, yeah, very that's, that's how they do the orders. Um, we have our, our catalog. This is my catalog. This wow. is I call this my Bible. This right. is my Brodag Bible. This is my catalog. I have every piece cut and I put it in these sure. plastics so that it's right. easy. Mm -hmm. And any any corrections or changes that we have, I want for the next catalog, I'll write them in here. <coughs> if Joe Brodag good. sees something that needs changed or a mistake, or somebody calls and sees a mistake, I'll write it in here. So the next time we print the catalog, we go to this Bible, and when it's typeset, they get my Bible. And back here, I keep track of every Brodac item there is. I have very it. Very good, Jen. This, that, that is every Brodac item. And when John says, we, I want to start selling 440 by one inch bolts, mm -hmm. we never had them before. I want to start packaging them. I'll come in here and I will pick a number. Get a number And put a, give it a number and yeah. write it, I'll write it in here. So that's, very, that, very that's cool. how we keep track of our inventory here. Great. So. That is pretty impressive. Okay. Now this one 
this back here is all the, this is all Brodac box labels wow. and the decals. Some oh, are the wow. water, some are the water decals, some are press, pressure sensitive. That's what these are. These are all the Brodac decals. Oh, wow, very nice. And the box labels. There's the end labels. Uh -huh. And then the <laughs> top that label. Is very cool. Down on the bottom row is all the bulk nuts, bolts, washers by the yeah. thousands. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I pretty much have these all in number order, size order. I try to keep them together. And whenever I come over, whenever I want to make little hardware packages, I have little cups here, and I come and get a cup. And if I'm going to package, use these, I use, I have this bingo magnet. Sure, very good. And I come, <laughs> that's yeah, how I scoop good. them out of there with my very little bingo good. magnet. <laughs> very good idea. <laughs> so that's how I do that. Pick up there. Very good. That is awesome. I'll bring it back here to the wood Sure. Area. This is the wood area. All the balsa wood. For the most part, we try to keep the 16th by 3, 16th by 4. A lot of the, uh, a lot of the balsa is used the same size is used in different kits, so we mm -hmm. try to keep it on stock. Our quarter by half leveling bars, our one eighth, sixteenth by one eighth uh, cap strips. We try to keep all that on stock here because most of it goes in every kit. And what if I wanted to purchase some quarter a quarter inch by by three or four by thirty six C grain? Do you guys have that on the slot we can buy? What we have here, we'll come over here and pull it. Whatever okay. we have here is what okay. we have. Okay. I mean, there's no grain here. Oh, so you, you, can't, just, you can't... We tell them that we want the lightest wood, mm -hmm. and that's what we get. Okay. All right. Now, the up here is the slab wings, oh, the cool. flight strike trainer wings, oh, and the basic wow, that trainer is wings. Awesome. That and, is awesome. Uh, they're made here in house as well as the leading and trailing edge oh, yeah. is made here in house. I'll so show I you wanted that. to purchase this the Flag Street Trainer wing. I can purchase that by itself. Yes, you can purchase those by themselves. Yes. Okay, that's that. Yeah. I could definitely use you my kids. You can't do it on the internet though. I don't have it up on the website, but you can call, call. it in and they will. Yes. That'll save me it. a lot of time. Yeah. Because yeah. I definitely want to build that Flag Street Trainer for my kids. I have young kids. I have a 12-year-old, uh, eight. Wait, 12, 12, 10, and 8. Oh, okay. Two girls and a boy. Oh, okay. And, so, uh, yeah, that'll save you time. Mm-hmm. Now, we, w we were making, we tried making, producing the BYO props here. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we just don't have the, the manpower or the people or the techniques here to get Mm -hmm. a lot of them at one time to get a quantity of them, a mass mm -hmm. production of them. Mm -hmm. And so it, John gave them samples to China, a company out there, so they're producing them for us because okay. they can mm -hmm. produce them and they are all the same and they are all, and they come 500 or a thousand at a time, whatever we mm. need. Very, very good. For us to produce that with just our manpower here, it's just not, not even feasible for us yeah. anymore. Very we good. tried it though. Yeah, I remember and seeing a video with Wendy. Wendy came and uh, watched uh, someone make a prop okay. on, on one of the, I think it was on a mill. On this machine, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, now this is ash wood, and this was the beginning of the propellers. This okay. is the, the, ball, the uh, raw wood, the raw ash. Mm -hmm. uh, they would cut it into this. Now, I may be a little bit wrong because I didn't do this technique. So no I may be a little bit wrong. No problem, hold against you, But Dan. they cut it down into that, and uh -huh. then they cut it down into this size and drill the hole in here. Then they would take it and get the shape of it. Mm hmm. Oh. Yeah. And these then are the dies. The hard, these are the, the hard part. Yeah, these are the dies to put the pitch on. Mm -hmm. And he would come over here. Our machinist, our machinist made this machine. Thank you, John. And this put the pitch on the props. And this is probably what you saw running. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these are the dies that are sitting right there. And mm -hmm. he changes these to for whatever pitch he needed. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Wow. And he would take the, uh, back in the back corner back there, we have a, um, a machine that, um, I can't think of what I want to even say here. I lost my train of thought. Is that a sander? Yeah, it's like a sander. Or a grinder of some sort? Yeah, it's a sander. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Some leftover rev ups. So that, that is the pitch machine. If you want one of those, you can have one of those. Those are for anybody, if you want to take one for the two laser, he mm -hmm. will come back here and use the pin router and pin route it. This is the fuselage for the flight strike. He puts the blank wood on there right. and he um, pin routes it right around. Wow, that does is... Each one separately. That is an interesting way of doing that. Yes. That's what he does. Wow, that is ingenious. Yeah, Isn't well... That's what you have to do if it's too laser. You know, is a nice clean cut. This, yeah. but this is uh, uh, that's uh, almost half inch. Yeah. Three if it's too thick, yeah. If it's too thick, he'll bring it over here and machine each one. Mm -hmm. Now this machine is the one that makes the leading and trailing edge. Oh yeah, yeah, router kind of thing. Yes, it routes it out, and uh, we put the wood in through here, and it comes out on this side. You pull it and you change the dies on them for whatever we're making. Yeah. And it's very loud. It screams. It's oh. real loud. <laughs> <laughs> this machine was used for the, um, to, just to put the last final sand right. on the propellers. Okay. I didn't sand the propellers. It was a dusty job. I didn't do it. The only thing I used this for is I'd come and turn it on if I broke my fingernail and I would file the Ah, nails. very good. Yeah, <laughs> that's excellent for that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this machine, again, is another shaper and he uses this for the uh, canopies and such. Oh, yeah. It's very, very nice. Now, this would be, that's what you mold the, uh, the uh, plastic over, right? So you make no, it like a buck? No, just a wooden. The wooden canopy. Yes, okay. the wooden canopy. Okay. This is one right here. This is the flight straight canopy okay. right here. Mm -hmm. Right. And he makes his jig again, and then he'll put his put his wood in there, and then he just whatever very, he does. Very yep. very good. Yep. That's how he does that. Very very neat. What a beautiful table saw. Yeah. Very nice table saw. This is how we get our fuel in. It comes in 55 gallon drums. Wow. Oh, well it's already paper. mixed. Yes, yeah. it's already mixed. Uh, they just got done pumping some. They put, they turn that barrel over onto this little cart here. Mm -hmm. And then they have this little spigot that they turn off and on. They'll sit on the crate and fill the little gallon jugs up on the Very court. Very nice. And it, um, we get it in like this and it has on here what it is, a sicker mm -hmm. comes on there of wh what it is, mm -hmm. and this is our Brodac number. We'll come through here with a marker and put on here our Brodac number. I see. Wow. And our, our dope is mixed. Uh, Nick is the one that mixes all the dope. It's across the street down in a little shed. Oh, okay. He gets the big 55 gallon drums of the clear or whatever it is, I don't know, and then he'll put the pigment in it and make the colors. Oh, he okay. mixes it by gallons oh. and brings it up here and then we'll put it into the little portal we'll pour it into the uh, little pint cans mm -hmm. and then I will get them to put the labels on them okay. for the four ounces. Yeah, I'd like to get a couple of cans, empty cans. I would like to buy some. Okay. I could use some. Okay. Um, over here is all of our music wire. Mm -hmm. Wow. We get it in 72 inch lengths and then wow. cut it as we need it. This machine will cut each wire. We put the wire in through here and this comes down and cuts it off. That's right. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And we sort of use this for our gauge as to how long we want it. Jim Hunt made this machine. Okay. Oh, very nice. See again, it's another old machine. That's what I said. None of our machines are all, you know, automated. They're all old, old school machines and mm -hmm. homemade machines, and they work for us. Very so. good.
That's how we roll here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. That, that works. This is all of our sticks, all of our sticks and our um, motor mounts. And for the most part, we order our motor mounts in 18 inches and 24 inch lengths. And if we need to cut them down into 12 inches, we'll take the 24 inch lengths and cut them down. Maple? Yes, all maple. Very nice. Drill presses and Yes, this is all the machinists area. Uh -huh. And I think I told you that Clay was with us and got hurt. Yes, okay. I saw, I, actually you didn't tell me I read about that when I saw him. Okay, yes, he was with us about 10 years and he fell and he got hurt. So oh. he's not here this flying with us. We're hoping he'll be able to come back. Uh, we do have another machinist that's been here over a year. His name is Jack and he makes all the tongue mufflers. And he has the tongue mufflers wow. set up here. That's what he was making, the tongue mufflers. Um, I can't tell you a lot about it because I don't do anything with these machines. Okay. Although I can tell you that he is very good at these tongue mufflers, and they were the Big Art tongue mufflers John sent him to Big Art's house when John bought the company, the Big Art uh, Muffler Company. He sent head. Jack to Big Art's, and he uh, explained to him the process of the tongue mufflers right. and how to make them. And our Artemis is so nice too. Uh, that yeah. must have been uh, a, 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 yes. a yes. That must yeah. have been a nice experience. Or here. Yes. Or, did you see him? Yeah, yeah. I saw him. Yeah. 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 He's a really nice man. Uh, Parker uses these machines to bend the landing gear. Oh, okay. Each each bend, and he'll you know oh, put wow. it in there. And that sure that's, beats my Higley little bender. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> how he bends the landing gear. Or my K and S bender. Up here is some of the samples. Of the landing, some of the samples of the landing gear are up here, and some of the machinists' work is here. These, these are made here. Jack just oh, wow. made these last week. These nice. are the top of our handles. Oh, okay. As you can see here, they yeah. go onto onto our right. handles for the slider bore adjustment. Uh, these are all made here too. The little sliders. Almost all the metal products that come from Brodak we make here. It's manufactured right here. These little, these little uh, adjustment wheels are made here. Mm -hmm. um, holy cow! It's raining out there. Yeah, it is. Oh boy. Oh boy. The window open a little bit. I didn't know it was gonna rain. It's a crack though. Okay. Uh, this stooges are made here, and all the little buttons for the stooges. All that's made here. I wasn't supposed to do this until after sex. I know. I was reading. I thought we was good till. I mean, it, it said partly um, scattered thunderstorms around three, and then the thunderstorms at six. That's what I read. That's what I. That's what I did before. Can I get the footage from that. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. You want to try your set screw in there? Okay, this little machine here, this is where I sit to run the line. I put it on the little reels here. It has a little foot pedal and a little gauge right here. Yes, oh that is and cool. I, I, run the, I run the wire through here onto here and it runs my gauge 60 feet or 70 feet. I, I, need, I need to buy one of these. <laughs> one of these? Yeah, that, I make I make okay. lines too. Oh, okay. And I, I wrap them and all the whole bit. Okay. And now I do not right put now. the ends on the lines. I don't think they're flying up there right now. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think, think so. Either. so. <laughs> this is how I put the wire onto the small rails. Okay. And these, whenever I order these, I order them in twenty thousand feet rails. Wow. 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 And this is just all the different lines that we sell, the different sizes and mm -hmm. footage. That basically concludes this tour. I think yeah, you've I think seen so. it all. Uh -huh. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Oh, oh, I am. I oh, am, good. Jan. It has been good, fantastic. This is good. unbelievable. I'm just, you know, I good. just can't tell you how blessed I am to be here and well, see all this, you know, and be here. That's good. Yeah, um, I've seen Wendy did a little video of this area too, really brief, and uh, 
It's just neat for me to be here. And I'm gonna share this with my family. Well, just my kids are gonna good. see this good. video and yeah. get a chance. It's just as nice to work here now. Have you you met John Brodak up there? Yeah, I met and, John Brodak, yeah, okay, and, and I met you, Buzz. Okay, the way you see John Brodak up there in his happy smiling face, that's how he comes wow. down here to us. That's awesome. He comes down here to us, he doesn't push and shove and he's not bossy. He'll ask, can you please do this for me? Can you please do that for me? Thank yeah. you. Yeah. and doesn't expect it to be done right now but whatever he asks for we generally stop what we're right. doing and get right. his job done first right. whatever he's doing. Right. I particularly do because I can't remember and if he tells me more than one thing I will have to write it down Right. but um, he, he's generally a very perky guy he will be here and run over to the main office within two seconds you go to find him to, to tell him something or ask him a question right. and he's gone that quick he's quick yeah but he's our happy go lucky guy. yeah he is i've yes, he is. been so impressed nice with him I bet. Nice uh, I bet he, i think he knows that we've been here for so long that we all know what we are to do right and he and, and we can get it done right very very good to him yeah, everyone, everyone I've dealt with has been very good here. He'll come in and he'll ask us, what are you working on? And we'll tell him what we're working on. If he wants something done, if we're working on one kit and he would rather have another kit pushed up in front of it, then we'll switch around to get what he wants done. Very good. So, yeah, very he's very good, good to work for. Uh, everybody in this building has been in here over 20 years. So, yes, from well, the print shop to Parker and myself. And, so yeah, that just goes to tell you that he is a very nice guy. Wow. Yeah. That tells you something. Oh, is he is he a Christian by chance? Pardon me? Is he a Christian by chance? No, I'm not. No, is he I, a, is John Brodick a Christian? Oh, we we're Catholics, both oh, of us. Okay. Yes. He right. is, I am Buzz is, yes. Right. Catholic very cool. by faith. Yes. You know, Catholics are Christians too, you know? Yes. I, my, my next door neighbor is Catholic, and uh, we have we have a great time together. You know, I mean, this Bible has a few different chapters in it that I don't have, and all you know. my yeah, and all my um, step brothers and sisters, they are all Christian, and they faithfully read the Bible and they teach Bible classes, all of them, and they're really into their religion and very yeah, helpful they, to other people yeah. and. Go out of the country to teach wow, and speak. Wow, yeah. Wow. In fact, my neighbor's leaving today. She's going to Peru to do some Christian work over in wow. Peru for the kids to teach them the Bible and all that, which is a good that thing. Is, that is awesome. I know, it is. It that is awesome. awesome. That is, I definitely get one of these in the measures. I'm actually measuring my lines out with a 100 foot ruler and just sometimes I don't like going outside. Yeah. This would be convenient to go outside. but. I mean, I'm not gonna be, I don't make that many lines to make it worthwhile to do that, but it's just kind of like, a, you know, it would be nice. I don't know where Tom purchased that from. Yeah. But I've seen this at Home Depot and Lowe's, oh, they, all, they all use this, not, not for sale, I mean, but they use it to measure rope and wire. So I've okay. seen this, I've actually even used this before. But I will give you my card. Okay. And I will ask him where he purchased it from. Well, that's a nice you can call me. I'll give me about a week or so. No. I'll ask him where he purchased no, 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 it from, no and I'll no let problem. you know. I appreciate it. Yeah, I don't. It's probably out of my price range. Like I said, I doubt I, it. I make lines for friends and I, and people, you know, who I fly with yeah. because uh, I make and a, then, don't make then, any money off it, but I just do it. If you look at this, the bottom of this table, Tom. Tom has it hooked to a uh, hole saw or a drill of something. Okay, yeah, drill. Yeah. If you want to oh, I see. Here. That's, see how he has yeah, it Yeah, that's up? very ingenious. Yes. That's very ingenious. And for the 25 years that I've been using this, yeah. it, it has never broke down on me. This is the same drill that he put on there. Wow. And it, yes. It, it works. It's the same chain, the same drill. It's been on there from day one. Is it a speed control drill? Uh, it has a foot pedal and it's no, it's just one, yeah. Bunch of speed. We have it, yeah, but it's it's pretty, it's set over there for one speed. Okay. So. That is very ingenious. Just go on the counter there. Yeah. That is very ingenious. Yeah. You don't, you don't use this on your plane? 
If you can get balanced, if that one can get balanced, yeah. If not, well, that's no no big deal. Well, you're going to have to balance it. You know, it's, it's not. There's no use even worried about the pitch until you get it balanced. Yeah, exactly, and I, we can check the pitch too. But yeah, I've never I've never checked pitches, so I'd, that'd be interesting for me. Uh, did you got the other one there. Oh, the other one is just going to be a souvenir for John oh, to sign. Oh, oh, okay. I'm going to okay. put this on the wall in my oh. garage to have John sign it. Let me see that when you did this a souvenir. Okay. Going on. Right. And straight across, there's the beige doors and the steps that go up. Yeah. That is the back side of the hobby shop. All right, I see to that. the left of that, that little house. Yeah. That that was John, John Burdak's parents' house. It is now the main office for everything that John owns. Wow. That is his main hub, his wow. main office. Sandy Bruce is his general manager, and she works out of that office. If you ever call here and you need to talk to John, and we say he is at the office, that's where he is in that I house. See. That and he good. runs between this manufacturing building, the office, and the hobby shop. He more or less hangs between those three places daily. Wow, that's very cool. So, that's a little bit. And John lived in that house, and when his parents started their uh, business, their marketing business, they uh, put a little fruit and vegetable stand up, probably in front of where that little house is, where the pine trees are. Right. They had like an army tent set up there. This was way back before my day. And I hope I'm telling you right, because if he sees this and I'm telling you wrong, I'm 